welcome to Beautiful You, a show that's designed to inspire, motivate, and empower you to be your authentic best. We invite you to join us on this journey of self-discovery, and we hope that over the next 30 minutes you find just one thing that will remind you that to be truly beautiful, you just have to be you. Coming up on today's show, CPR Guy DFW Thomas Mullins joins us to show us how and why CPR is so important to know. Then we join Dr. Jeffrey Edelglass of Skintastic to find out what we can do to make sure that our summer makeup is light and beautiful. And in our philanthropic segment, we learn all about Fashion Group International and their upcoming event, Night of Stars. But first, let's join Doug Rice from Boot Camp 90210 for a quick move that'll give us a total body workout. Summer sundresses are here and most of mine are strapless. I thought I'd stop by the gym and find out just how to make sure that not just my front and arms look good, but my back does too. I'm here with Doug Rice, certified personal trainer to get my upper body workout in. Hi, Doug. Hi, Leanne. I've got some great stuff for you today. Awesome. You know what? I've, I've realized that a lot of people spend time working on their arms, but they forget about their back and their chest. Yes. Well, this is really a total body exercise. Okay. So many muscles are involved here. It's a little bit challenging. It's fairly advanced, but I think we can catch on and get you doing it. Oh, no. Advanced. Okay. What's it called? It's called a dumbbell row, Okay. and then you jump up to overhead press. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you have to be slightly coordinated to get this one in. Slightly. Okay, we'll but this is something that you could do at home, though, with the little dumbbell weights, right? Uh, yes, you can. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. I love that because I'm ready to get these shoulders. And really, if you get your back and your shoulders working out, your neck is better supported. Everything. Will, and this works the core. This works the lower body. And this also will get your heart rate up so that you can burn a lot of calories. Ooh, calorie burning and looking good. Yes. I love that. Yes. Let's do it. All right. Hey, okay, show me how it's done. Okay, so you start off by getting your body into a straight line push-up position. Okay? okay. So don't pike the butt up like this. Try to keep it in a nice straight line with the abs braced. Okay. Then you're gonna pick your arm up into a row. Pick the other one up into a row. Okay, after you've done that, then you're gonna jump, stand up, press up, bring them back down, and start everything again. So you're here, row it, row it, jump, and press. Boom, you ready? Okay, <laughs> start down. Start down in that push-up okay. position. Okay. And then get your body in, the, in that straight line. Remember, don't pike the butt up in the air. Okay, plank like that. Okay, then you're going to row the arm up. Row the other arm up. Now jump to them. Stand up. Press up. Boom. Right back down to it. Okay. Woo! Yes. This is not that bad. Yes. Now can you yes. put your feet out just a little bit to yeah. have balance? Yes, you can. Down? That's a really good point. Tell me, you're going to take my job. No, I don't know about <laughs> that. But I'm definitely going to get in shape. Yes, you Woo! are. This is great. So you That's can see all the things that are working here. You got, to, you got your core working. When you pull those dumbbells up, your core is really having to kick in and stabilize your body. Then, you, then you're jumping up, you got the shoulders working, lots of things going on. And the cardio for sure. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, okay. Oh, I don't even think I could close this <laughs> If you wanna try this move at home, grab yourself some dumbbells and get going. Or check out any of his other fabulous moves to get you in shape at bootcamp90210.com. Oh my gosh, that was Ooh. cardio. <laughs> <sighs> you know, I'm frequently asked that question. I already have dark skin. I really don't burn. Do I need sunscreen? And my answer to these people is yes if you want to save your life. Because the incidence of skin cancers, both uh, basal cell and melanoma, is increasing rapidly in our aging population. And from some of the cause is sun tanning from an early age and in people of color. And not only will the sunburning and the effect of sunlight affect your chance of skin cancer, but it also causes what we call photoaging. So you'll look young longer if you protect your skin. 
And w there are a number of things that you can do to just t t self test. One is look under your arm and see the difference in color between the areas under your arm that faces your body and the rest of your skin. The other thing that people can do is remember UVA and UVB. Hard to remember the difference, but UVA rays, the A is for aging, and the B is for beauty and for burning. And the B is what gives us the burn, but the A, the aging, is imperceptible until many years later. That's why when people buy sunscreen, they should buy a broad spectrum sunscreen that they can use every day. Summer is here and that means trying to find a way to cool off. And usually that's gonna involve a body of water, whether it's a swimming pool or a lake. Would you know what to do if you found someone unresponsive underwater? Well, we're here today with Thomas Mullins. He's the CPR guy, DFW.com, and he's going to help us learn how to save a life. Hi, Thomas. Hi, how are you? So really, CPR is kind of scary for people who are uncomfortable with it or don't know anything about it. Right, and I think that's one of the first things they get gripped with is the fear. The number one thing I want people to remember is to remain calm. Call 911 and start CPR if you have an unresponsive victim that you have pulled from the water. CPR is one of the most basic things you can do to prolong life or potentially keep someone alive while we're waiting for EMS to arrive. So that really, could take anywhere from 5, 10, even up to 15 minutes until paramedics or EMS arrives to assist. That's a long time for us to go without circulation in our brain and our vital body organs. So pushing hard and fast on someone's chest is a way to help preserve that until Advanced Cardiac Life Services does show up. Besides drowning, what are other common things that we would use CPR for? Sudden cardiac arrest. Okay. Over 300,000 out of hospital sudden cardiac arrest every year. Wow. Yeah, That's at home, lot. at work. Uh, on vacations, what would I do? And so that's another reason that people should arm themselves with the knowledge of CPR and how to use an AED. Okay, so what else, what's the other common one? I think I know what it is. Choking. Choking. Right. So what's the universal sign for choking? We all know this. Exactly right. And yeah. they can't speak. They can't speak, little or no air exchange. We need to help them. Oh, it sounds painful. All right, so what we would do is tell them, hey, I'm going to help you. And then what you would do is reach from behind them, and you would locate their navel, just okay. like this. So locate your navel with your index finger there. Right. Now what you would do is make a fist like this, and okay. you'd roll the face of that fist just above your belly button. Yeah, just okay. above your belly button, like just so right, there. right there. Uh -huh. Okay. And make sure it's flat like that. I don't oh. want you driving oh. the knuckle. Okay. That. okay. There you go. Okay. Now you pull this hand over that hand just like that, and you would pull in and up. In, in and, and up, up under the ribs correct trying to push that restriction up and out of their airway exactly oh, right wow now if they were pregnant or obese and you can't reach around them you would reach from underneath the armpits right here from behind them okay and then down nope you would actually take the face of that fist and you position it right here in the center of the chest okay and you would pull straight in like this <sighs> to try to relieve their choking wow with kiddos they're shorter than us yes so you'd have to bend down to assist them. It'd be the same way. If they're able to walk and stand, that's what we would do. Give the abdominal pull from behind them, just like that. Okay, got it. And then you'll know when you're successful because usually something will fly out of their mouth, right? Absolutely. Air exchange, whatever it was they were choking on, we'll see it. And they're obviously going to be breathing normal again. What happens if even though we're doing this, mm -hmm nothing comes up and they're not responding to our efforts. So in about 20 seconds, if you've not cleared my airway, I will become unresponsive. Ooh. So that means 200 pounds is gonna turn into 2,000 pounds. And you'll just go down. Exactly, yeah, it's gonna be a crash landing. You can let my butt hit the ground, just don't let their head, head hit the ground. Okay, yeah. okay. Shout for help, start CPR. Start CPR. Yeah, exactly okay. right. Because actually when you push hard and fast on someone's chest, it That's clears. about 10 times more effective than giving those abdominal pulls. Wow. So when you give 30 compressions, when you open their mouth to give ventilations, you'll look to see if the restriction's there. Okay. If you see it, then safely remove it at that time 
and continue CPR until the victim becomes responsive. Okay, all right, so we're gonna drop down and learn a little CPR today? Let's learn compressions for sure. Compressions, yep. okay. All right, what are these? So these are mannequins that we'll train on today practicing our compressions. Okay. So recently you noticed the American Heart Association just rolled out that hands-only CPR campaign. Oh, okay. So a lot of times people are afraid to give ventilations, breaths, mouth to mouth to someone. So what we've tried to do is simplify it. Okay. Hands only CPR, giving compressions only. Okay, so yeah. giving compressions only. Show me how, how would I go about giving a compression? So on an adult, you're going to push in on their chest at least two inches or a third their body depth third of their body depth. So the bigger they are, the deeper you have to push in. That's exactly right. So if you have a victim that's this thick, you're going to push in about wow. that deep into their chest. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you prepare a victim, like with the victim sitting out, should you remove their clothes so that it's hands to chest? Correct. Okay. You should always bear the chest of your victim, male or female. Just... We remove their clothes in order so yeah. that they don't restrict the quality of compressions. Okay. And also in hopes that if an AED comes, we'll attach the pads directly to their skin. And they'll be ready to go. Exactly right, to okay. defibrillate. Mm -hmm. All right, hands only compression. Proper hand placement it? for CPR is the center of the chest on the lower portion of the breastbone. Okay. Center of the chest, lower portion of the breastbone. Yeah, okay. so a bit above the xiphoid process, all right? You're gonna use the heel of your hand, just like this, exactly. Now, you would want that to be your whatever dominant hand. So if you're, if you're a left dominant, you would use your left hand. If you're right dominant, your right hand. Whatever is most comfortable for you and allows you to give the best quality compression. Okay, right. okay. If it's your right hand, then use your right hand. Okay. Then you would position your other hand over it, just like this keeping the fingers of the hand in contact with the mannequin extended. Okay. okay. And then you want to make sure that your shoulders are directly over your hands so that you're pushing straight into the victim's chest. Okay, so you can get like a jackhammer almost straight down the most pressure. Correct. And it's important that you push deep enough, but also allow the chest to recoil back to its normal position. Because when you do that, what you're doing when you press on the heart, you're pushing blood out of the heart to the brain and to the vital body organs. We let the chest recoil back to its normal position. That pulls blood back in. Fills it back up so that you can then push it back out again. Exactly. Wow. And when you do that at a rate of 100 a minute, wow. you're acting as that person's circulatory system. So that's why it's imperative that you push hard and you push fast. Push hard, push fast, but allow the heart to come back up. Let the chest recoil back to its normal position. Okay. All right. So show me how to do it. So our shoulders are directly over our hands and we just start pushing into their chest like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirty compressions, and then you would give two breaths if you were willing to give breaths. Okay. If you were not, because there was something unpleasant there, or you don't know this person, continue with chest compressions until 911 arrives or an AED becomes available. Becomes available. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me try this. So I stand over it where I'm balanced mm -hmm. and then I push straight down. Correct. How do you know if you're pushing far enough? So you wanna push two inches and you wanna push, yeah, exactly. You won't be able to push hard enough or fast enough. Really, most people are afraid to push hard and fast. I would because, be. Yeah, they're afraid they're going to hurt them. I don't want to break someone's breastplate or chest bone or rib. We can fix that, uh, but we can't fix the other. We can't fix death. That's right. Exactly right. So okay. you'll push really hard and push really fast. Wow. Okay. So 30 compressions, hard and fast, and then two breaths? Correct. You'll give two ventilations. And how you do that? is after your 30th compression, okay. you would do what we call a head tilt chin lift, just like this, always making contact with the bony parts of the face. That okay. way you don't get into their airway here. Okay. Pinch their nose, and then you would position your mouth over theirs, and you would give just enough ventilation or breath until you see their chest rise. You don't want to push too forcefully with your breaths because it'll go past their lungs and into their tummy. Okay. Right. We can't breathe out of our tummy. No. All right. So I've okay. opened the airway. I pinch the nose. Okay. And then I'm going to give two rescue breaths until I see the chest rise. <gasps> you could actually see it rising. Exactly right. So you know you've given adequate ventilation to the victim. 
when you see the chest rise. And you'll see that in a human as well. Correct, exactly. And then you would go right back to compressions. To compressions until help arrives. Or what happens if they become responsive? Roll them over onto their side. Okay. into the rescue position and we'll stay with them until 911 arrives. The most important thing I want people to remember is to remain calm, call 911, start CPR, and get an AED if one is available. Okay, what is an AED? An automated external defibrillator. So this is available now to us, the general public, in areas where large amounts of people congregate. Swimming pools, Churches, hotels, casinos, airports. Airports. Absolutely. I know I've seen them at the airport. Large sporting events. So okay. this is a training device, an AED. Okay. Right? They're very simple to use. Even if you've never had training on this before, you can still figure it out as long as you remember to turn it on. It will tell you exactly what to do in loud, clear voice prompts. Thank you so much, Thomas. Cool. All right, guys, you go check him out online. He's got classes, private lessons, amazing information. Go to his website at CPRGuyDFW.com or check out his Facebook page, CPRGuyDFW, where there's actually a story up about someone saving an eight-year-old's life. Gotta love that. Thank you so much, Thomas. Mm -hmm. You oh did my a great gosh. job with the AED. It, it really does. It looks like a toy, though. Yeah, I know, right? But that was the first time you used one. I've never seen it before. That's incredible. I'm like, and it's, it's super easy to see. I mean, All the you have to be is a good listener. It's crazy. <laughs>Summer is here and there are days when I absolutely don't want to put a stitch of makeup on because it's just so hot. So we're sitting down with Dr. Jeffrey Edelglass of Skintastic to find out what we can do to look more beautiful without wearing makeup. Hi, Dr. A. Good morning, Leanne. You know what? It is so, in the season here has just already hit and we're in 98, 99. I know soon we'll be in triple digits. So what can we do to look better without having to put makeup on our face? Well, there are a number of things, especially in hot weather. And one of the things that we do is called permanent makeup. And what that does is it provides you with the ability to wake up with makeup. I and love that. Isn't that unbelievable? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what we do is we do brows, we do eyeliner, and even lip liner. Wow. So you can wake up looking as beautiful as you went to bed. Okay, so you do eyebrows. Tell me, how do you, how does it work? Well, we do this. The procedure takes about an hour, sometimes okay. a little longer, sometimes a little shorter, depending upon the person. And we do individual hairs. So we give the individual patient a natural, beautiful color that they like. I love that. You know, one of the things that I won't leave the house without doing is putting a little shadow on my brows. It just feels to me like it frames my face and it makes my eyes stand out. So you're saying this would be something that I'd never have to do again. That's great. That's true. And to that together with a little eyeliner <laughs> and even a little bit of a, a lip liner, that combined perhaps with a little filler for, oh. some, for some summer lips. Okay, so when we do the eyebrows one lash at a time, how long does it last? Well, you know, it varies from person to person mm -hmm. with sun exposure and with a number of factors. But overall, it lasts for many years. Is it a natural product? It's a natural pigmented product, yes. Wonderful. So it's not dangerous to use on your face. It's not going to cause any irritation or anything. No, but it takes a lot of skill. Everything we do at Skintastic is medically supervised. And what this does, it helps us to achieve fabulous results. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love that. I would love to have permanent. Okay, now you said eyeliner too. Yes. What do you do for eyeliner? Well, it's more or less the same uh, type of procedure. Okay. It's done with pigments that the patient together with Skintastic picks out for the best results for the patient. So can an individual choose how thin or thick the eyeline, eyeliner a is? Absolutely. We try to keep it to thin so they can always add more yeah. or, or put something on for a little enhancement if they have a special night. But to wake up and be set that you don't need to do anything else, 
That's the idea. I, and eyeliner to me is something that always makes the eyes pop. It always makes them look open and look, makes you look refreshed. Well, that's the idea but overall behind Skintastic. We want all our patients to look revitalized, refreshed, and more beautiful from the moment they wake up till the time they go to sleep. I love that. All right, lips. I'm a little nervous with lips. <laughs> what do you do for lips? You well, summertime is here, and you know, beautiful lips in the summer. Not only do we do lips for the size, okay. but we also do lip liner for color. And many women as, and men, believe it or not, I do as they age have lip lines. So we do the size of the lips, okay, the color of the lips and lip lines. Wow. Especially, I know, like smokers who end up with lip lines, doing a small lip line will actually make their lips look better. It'll Absolutely. Give that and it makes their lips pop out. And I think that looks absolutely beautiful in the warm weather. To, oh, I think lips and eyes frame your entire face. I could not agree more. Thank you so much, Dr. A. There you have it. If you would like to look more beautiful, more natural, without having to put a stitch of makeup on, then come visit Dr. Jeffrey Edelglass at Skintastic and he'll get you perfectly ready for the summer. Thank you so much, Dr. A. Wow, great, I can't wait to try some of that. Can't wait. I know. It'd be beautiful all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Today in our philanthropic moment, we're joined by Jennifer DeSacaris Fleming from Fashion Group International. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you for having me, Leanne. So when was the Fashion Group International founded? Well, it was founded in 1930 by a group of, I think, 17 women, just to name a few, Eleanor Roosevelt, Edna Woolman Chase, who was editor-in-chief of Vogue at the time, Elizabeth Arden. How but, wonderful. So just some powerful women within the fashion industry. They wanted to create a force um, for the fashion industry. You know, I love they, that. It was, it was time for the fashion industry to take the next step and um, recognize those in, with careers in, in the industry. Yeah. Because so many fashion designers yeah. are from overseas, so yeah. it's nice to have something that focuses yeah. on what we do. Absolutely. So internationally, it's been around for 85 years, and wow. Dallas chapter has been around for 65 in 2014. That is wonderful. Long okay, time. now what is the specific mission of Fashion Group Dallas? Well, we really like to focus on um, our two events that are each year, okay. uh, Career Day being in April and the Night of Stars in November. Okay. And um, what we do throughout the year, we have programs that we raise money for scholarships to be given at Career Day. So our biggest mission, I guess would you would say, is that we like to promote the education and making sure that everyone reaches a higher level um, in their career within the fashion industry. Now, I love that because the Dallas chapter, our um, career day, is the biggest career day it in is. the country. It is, and the longest running. That's wonderful. Know, so people from all over the country, mm -hmm. if they're a design student, can submit or enter career day Absolutely. to hopefully win a scholarship. We have kids from all over the country coming, all different states. I think this past year we had 12 different states represented. Wonderful. Um, 45 universities and colleges, um, and we are the longest running. So this year was a 45th year. That is amazing. Okay, what are some of the scholarships that you give away? Um, well, there's the Musselman Foundation Scholarship, which is provided by the Musselman family, Brian Bulky and 4510. Um, it allows the winner to create their own line that will be carried in 4510 and it's also a $10,000 scholarship. That so, is fabulous. Huge, huge. This that's year was a, our second year for that and it's successful all the way. That's got to be a huge boost to a young fashion designer oh, trying so hard. It gives me goosebumps to even think about what what a student thinks when they win $10,000. We also award a Paris Academy scholarship which is for the student to study abroad in Paris. Oh, how and cool. What fashion designer doesn't want to do that? To go study in Paris, exactly. that's got to be a dream I for mean, any student. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. <laughs> but um, uh, those are the two main awards, but we also do have you know, the President's Award and it's all monetary scholarships. So That's um, wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Night of Stars, no. November 15th this year. Yes. What is Night of Stars? Um, it is a, it's a gala. I yeah. mean, it's, you dress up in your nicest gowns and 
three-piece suits and um, you know we showcase all of the fashion successes that we've had over the year um, we there's a fashion show and then we also give awards to local people and businesses that um, have been you know very supportive, supportive of the fashion of the whole, yeah yes. so um, we, re we recognize all those that have helped us along the way help us help you you know yeah and and we have the fashion police the fashion police yes which, which is <laughs> we will be doing this year i'm very, very excited i am too very excited to be a part of the fashion police and basically that's just uh, local people in the city who uh, are willing to help sponsor and support the yes. organization kind of as uh, individual sponsors Terrific. I love it. Thank you so much for joining Thank us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So if you would like to find out more about Fashion Group International or join us for the Night of Stars, check out their website at www.dallasfgi.org. Thank you so Thank much. You okay, so what color are you wearing so we don't wear the same yeah, color? No, yeah. <laughs> Something grand for sure. I hope that they kind of make it to where people have to submit what they're wearing so we don't wear the yeah. same things. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this episode of Beautiful You. And we hope that you found just something on this journey of self-discovery today that inspired you. For even more inspiration, go like us on Facebook at Beautiful You HDTV. To find out what's coming up on next week's show, check us out on Twitter at Beautiful You HD. And to see behind the scene pictures, get amazing offers from our guests, and even extended interviews, go to our website at beautifulyou-hdtv.com. We'll see you next week for another episode of Beautiful You. And remember one thing this week, you are beautiful.